Hi, I'm Rebecca and welcome to episode 30 of the Korea Bay Knitting Podcast. Hello and welcome, my name is Rebecca, I'm a knitter based in Edinburgh and this is a vlog or a podcast or a video cast all about knitting, what I'm currently knitting on, what I've been knitting on and what I would like to be casting on in the not too distant future. And it has been a hot minute since I last uploaded an episode. All December I did like a weekly like vlogmasy kind of thing and then the last couple of episodes have been my 2022 everything I knit videos and then last week I tried to sit down and record and something funny happened with the footage and I couldn't I had like this whole chunk of footage with no audio so we're back and hopefully this one makes it onto the internet <laughs> uh, but it's kind of good I felt like I kind of needed the dry run like the, the practice last week um because I was all over the place and hopefully today I'm a little bit more composed <laughs> Maybe I'm not more composed, but let's find out. Um, what do I have to talk about today? I have quite a lot to talk about because it's been so long. So I have a handful of works in progress. I've got one finished object. I've got loads of cast, like loads of things cast on. Um, I've got a knit along to share, and I've got an advent to talk about that has wrapped up and that I'm excited to talk about and share. So. I realise I'm missing some yarn, but I can go get that in a second. I can get started anyway and talk to you about it. So I'm not wearing anything I knit today. It's kind of warm and bright in here and I didn't want to get all flustered. Um, but I've also got this cool new t-shirt with this like fun little summery logo. And I was like, oh, I want to wear my new t-shirt. So I'm wearing my new t-shirt. Um, but I do have some, I have one finished object. I actually have a handful of like gift knits that I knit, but they're done. They're been gifted. They're already with a recipient. So I can't really talk through them. So we're just gonna pretend it didn't happen because I don't have anything to share about them. I made a couple of pairs of gloves and a pair of socks, but one of the gloves I have as a whip today so I can talk about it when I talk about that. So let's start with my finished object. And it is a sweater and I've had it on once and I'm in love. This is my Dorney sweater, which is my own pattern, which is coming out one week today, and I finished my second sample. So here it is. Isn't it just the most perfect <laughs> cable knit sweater? I don't know if anyone else has this, but I'm so fussy with cable knit sweaters. I see them and I'm like, meh, meh. Like I like it like 75% but I don't like it 100%, which I think is entirely the reason why I designed one because I was like, I just don't, they're all just a bit too fussy or a bit this or a bit that. So I was like, well, I'm just gonna think what my perfect sweater is and then make it. <laughs> so it's a very simple symmetrical cable. It's almost a horseshoe cable, but it has this like rib detail to break up the, the cables. And it's a raglan with this nice big chunky neckline and um, some sleeves because <laughs> that's what they have. I'll pop it on quickly um, and show what it's like. I wore this to the office this week. Well, I don't really have an office, but um, I work from home normally and my work gives us a pass to a co-working space and we can book in up to three times a week. And so I am trying to get in once a week just to get out the house. Um, and so I wore this, this was like my reward, like if you leave the house you get to wear your new shiny sweater <laughs> because <laughs> the only regular times I need to leave the house are on Mondays for knit night and on Wednesdays for the office. And of course I leave other times but they're the only like scheduled things that I need to do during the week. Like the weekends you often do things but they're the only scheduled times. So I get excited, like if I finish something either I'm going to wear it to knit night on a Monday or the office on a Wednesday and I blocked it and hoped it would be dry for knitting out on Monday and it was not. Which I was sad about, but I was like, it's okay. I've got the office on Wednesday. <laughs> this is it, so I can give you a little close up. Doo -doo -doo -doo. So I really love it. I need to, I'm gonna add a little bit of elastic into the collar. That's the only thing I've got left to do on this. And I think I've got some sleeves, some stitches to weave in. I think I did all the ones which were obvious. Oh, hair everywhere. I think I wove in all the obvious ends, but there's a possibility I did not weave in every single one of the ends. 
so yeah, this is my Doherty number two. Um, I used, I've so does anyone else do this? Like you finish a project and then you just have a project bag full with full of needles and stuff that you've not organised yet. That's this bag. It has a lot in there. I should sort that out this weekend. Um, I used West Yorkshire Spinners Jacobs Iron um, in the natural colourway, and this is what it looks like. Um, and it's perfect. It was super good for getting gauge. Um, I think my gauge is actually a little bit small, but it's fine for me. Like I'm not bothered with it, but um it i should have just got a pretty good size but um, i'm also a very tight cable knitter which i realized with this project um i use not very much yarn so i think i still have like two two full skeins in this left of i think 10 i think i bought 10 um so i used what was that like seven and a half skeins which i think is pretty good i will measure that and make sure that's correct by the time the pattern goes live <laughs> <laughs> um, and this feels like a real like outdoor yarn but I'm excited this feels like the kind of yarn that the more I wear it the more it will soften up it's not it's fine next to skin I mean I've got a t-shirt underneath but like this isn't aggravating my neck or anything but it's definitely not like super soft and luxurious it feels like a rustic yarn it's also very well priced um, I was eager to make a second version the first one is worsted with mohair and I know some people don't like mohair and I know some people like I know that it's just like mohair if you add a strand of mohair it just puts the price of that garment like through the roof <laughs> because you basically got like a second sweater quantity um and so I was eager to try and get it gauge with something that I could hold single and I did which is this so I love this I feel a bit like um Chris Evans in Knives Out the first one like that feels like one of these sweaters and I think it's going to get so much wear I I'm excited because the pictures for this are we taken on Sunday, which is also the reason that my hair is gonna be looking a little bit worse for wear because I did some backwards planning. Like my hair is best on day two. <laughs> I think this is day three. And day two hair is my best hair. So if I want Sunday for the pictures for my best day two hair, then I need to wash my hair tomorrow morning. <laughs> Hence why my hair is probably gone past its best. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, I'm working again with Jasmine who has taken the, pattern, the pictures for the Cargill sweater and the Care sweater. And I, I love her, I think she's amazing. She's really fun to work with. Um, like I tend to pick a location and then we go there and then she, like she knows now, like I want some detail shots and some wider shots and like she knows what I'd like, but also sometimes I'd be like, let's try this. And she's like, cool, like let's try it. And that works really nicely, so. I like that a lot. So we are, I'm taking pictures with Amy Palco, um, who has made a hot pink Dorney. Um, the pictures so far have been taken with my test knitters. So um, Amy is one of my test knitters. Um, and hers has got this like beautiful, like more open neck. Um, one of the edits to the pattern was the rate of pickup for the collar. And it's edited for the final pattern. So you get this more like fixed collar. But Amy has kept hers more open. So she has like, a really wide collar, which is stunning. It's like a boat neck. Um, and Yenny, who was one of the one of the poster girls for the Cargill. So we're meeting on Sunday morning to take some pictures. And next Friday, this pattern is releasing, which is terrifying. It feels like I'm out of it, like I'm out of practice with releasing patterns, but I'm looking forward to it. And I've got a lot of work to do this week to make sure it's ready to go. <laughs> um, perfect, so that is my finished object. My Dorney sweater by me coming out um, the 27th, which is next Friday. I will have an episode out next week because I'm like out of sync. Like I usually do two a month or like one every two weeks, but because last week's didn't upload properly, I'll do this week and next week and then we'll hopefully be back to like a two week schedule. Not that anyone is interested in my podcasting schedule, but I'm sharing it with you anyway. Perfect, so this is my only finished object. Let's get into works in progress. I have one, two, three, four, Five works in progress. Let's start with a little easy one. Um, I'm going to take the sweater off actually, just because I'm going to get really warm. Um, there we go. Um, oh, now I'm all crinkled. There we go. So, um, my first finished object, well, not my first, that is my only finished object. My first work in progress is a pair of gloves, and these are the Penny Gloves by Petite Knit, and I made two pairs of these are Christmas gifts 
and this is a pair for myself and I've not worked on them in three weeks. So this is what I have so far. <laughs> oh, I just hit myself in the face with that needle. Um, and this is just the one glove I have, I don't even have the other one. So yeah, I should get moving with these. I might do some work on them this weekend actually if we're, are we getting the train anywhere? Maybe not. Um, such a nice pattern. I really, really like this, this pattern. It just flew off my needles, but it wasn't socks. It was a fun gauge. It was really nice. So I made one pair in um, Filcolana Alva and Filcolana... I can't remember. The lace weight alpaca and the fingering weight. And I found it to be a bit too dense, but it draped, it, it did block out lovely. And I gave it to my mum and then I made a second pair in Drops Alpaca for my stepmom and they were beautiful. They were so soft and drapey. Um, and I like shortened the cuff on them a little bit because the other ones I found to be really long. And so this one is like my Goldilocks pair where the cuff is like not as long as my first pair and not as short as my second pair, but they're right in the middle. So I think I've just started the thumb increases um, and that's what I've got to. This is Filcolana Prinilla. I'm terrible, I can't remember anything today. Yeah, Filcolana Prinilla, I think, in the colour Dijon. And this, I already have a Sophie scarf in the same colour. And so this was like, it's part of a set. I've also got a hat that's a similar colour. So my goal was if I can make the gloves, then I've kind of got a full set um, of like winter accessories. So I've not been knitting on these and I've had cold hands, so I should just finish them. <laughs> but I've had so many other exciting projects that I've not worked on them. Anyway, that's my first work in progress of penny gloves in this super cute bag. I showed it a while ago. It's from Lysander and Olive on Etsy, who I like stumbled across. Um, and they make really good like small project bags and this one's just super cute. Okay, let's talk about... What next? Okay, let's talk about another design. Because that's exciting. So, um, I currently only have two designs pending. <laughs> Um, the first one is the Dorney, which is coming out next week, and the second one is the Lanark sweater. The Lanark sweater, I'll put a picture, is like a, a, a zip sweater with all over half fisherman's rib. It is um, my, I don't know what the word is, I've forgotten the word. It's like my, my, my big piece, my big, my big thing that I'm like proud, the most proud of to date. Um, it's really fun construction, it's an like interesting construction, it's a super wearable piece, it's really lovely to wear, it's really fun to knit, like it just ticks every single box in a way that makes me really happy as a designer. So um, that is coming out at the start of March, like the very first week of March. I think I, my goal originally had been to do it in February but I wasn't organised enough with getting the test that started on time and I wanted to give the testers um, as much time as possible to knit. So it's, they've got an extra, they've got nine weeks. So it's the first week of March. My first sample was knit in bare naked wool, Kent DK, and he sent me that yarn. That was gifted yarn. Um, but I am also making another one. Um, and I've been a bit indulgent. So I make, I've got one already and I'm making a second one. And I have two sample letters making two more versions. But one of those versions is going to belong to my mum, so eventually I only have three, which is still a lot of sweaters. It's a lot of one type of sweater, but it's okay. It's fine. <laughs> um, so one, the one I'm making, the second one, I've, I'm not very far. I've sort of partway through the back piece, so I'm going to show you it, but it looks a bit funky. So this is what I have so far. So you can see I've got my folded collar, um, and then I've started working on the back, and what will happen next... Um, what will happen next? I'm really struggling to hold this up. <laughs> Why is it bending so much there? Okay, maybe I should hold it this way. This is the inside, sorry, that's the outside. So this is the back and then I'll keep working these like the armhole edges and then I'll pick up for the front and do some fancy shaping and then join in the round and we are away. So I have um, until the pictures for this are we're doing it on the 26th of February so I have to have it ready and blocked by then but I think we'll be in a good place to do that. That should be fine, there's still a lot of time. And the pictures I'm doing, I don't really have any local testers for this. I have a couple, but the people who are testing it locally are testing it for their husbands and partners. I think one husband and one partner. 
and I don't want to like impose like hey see that thing you're gift knitting for your partner do they also want to come to a photo shoot with me <laughs> so I asked my mum and my brother uh, so I waited until New Year's Day when my brother maybe had a, like a cider or two and I was like hey so I have this idea but he said yes so that's amazing so we're going to uh, the beach that's close to my house and take some pictures I'm really looking forward to it and I'm a bit nervous um I don't think my mum is very, like, she likes, she's good at getting pictures taken, but I don't know how she'll be on the day. And my brother's a bit awkward, <laughs> so <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> um, so yeah, so there's this one, and this is, this is my version, and then there's a navy blue one in Tuka Wool DK, which is going to be my mum's version eventually, and a red one, a tomato red one, in Sadness Garden Double Sunday in the colour that orange feeling which I'm really excited for. So a um, bit of deja vu here because my Dorney which is now inside out on the floor was knit in West Retro Spinners Jacob's iron weight and this happens to be in West Retro Spinners uh, Jacob DK weight so it's the exact same yarn at a, spun at a lighter gauge. Um, this was not the plan, let's just put it that way. I did some swatching and I can only find one of my swatches and now I can't even find that one. Okay, it's right behind the camera. So, I did some swatching and my original plan had been to use Holst. Now I've got a couple of cones of Holst and I've, I've kind of knit with one of them but like I've not done a whole lot of Holst knitting. So I was eager to like, I like the fabric that Holst gives and I was eager to get it out of my stash and I was like, yes, I'm gonna use Holst. And so I did a swatch with Holst and this is, I cannot remember the colour, I want to call it oatmeal, it might not be oatmeal, double stranded. And I love the fabric it gives, I did not enjoy knitting it. And I need to work my way through this because I don't like the feeling of holes before blocking. And I have got four cones. <laughs> I have a grey, a beige, a red and a brown and I've not used any of them. Um, because I don't like how it feels to knit up. So I need to work through that. I think I want to try knitting something really simple and see if I like it. Alternatively, I could like put it on my Swift, wind up some skeins and give it like a pre-wash or a pre-block, which I think I might have to do because I really just don't like how it feels to knit up, which is frustrating. And I think long-term, I probably should just not buy Super Soft because I just don't, like it's cheap and it makes an amazing fabric. But if I don't like knitting with it, I should stop buying it. Um, but I do still have four cones, to work, four cones to work through and I love them and I love the colours and I love this fabric so I should fix that. So this is the first one but I was like ah, I just don't love it and it is an all over texture and it, it makes look that definition is really good. Um, it's all over texture but I wasn't feeling it. I was just not loving the experience. And then I swatched and this is the swatch I can't find. I swatched in Good Wool from Pearl Soho and that wool has converted me. I adore it. It is the softest thing I've knit with in that I can remember, I think. Um, it's the colour oatmeal. Oh, no, it's not colour oatmeal. It's the colour wheatgrass, undyed wheatgrass, I think. And it's beautiful. However, I didn't get row gauge. And I could have fudged it for the pattern, but um, I'm on a deadline and I didn't really want to... Like I didn't really want, like I want the sample to be pretty accurate and I want this one to take some pictures to include in the final pattern and all these things. So I was like, there's no point in, I should try and work with something that gets gauge. That being said, two test knitters are using Pearl Soho Goodwill and they got gauge. So I think it must work for some people, but for me, I struggled with roll gauge. But that yarn I'm casting on at some point this year because it's glorious. What I really want to do is to make like the novice cardigan maybe, mohair edition gauge but not with mohair and steak it. So I'm gonna work it in the round and steak it because I just think it would be the most wearable everyday cardigan in existence. Um, but it is so, so soft. I would, if you've not tried it yet and you're looking for like a real good yarn, I mean, I can't talk about how well it holds up. Um, it's also really interesting because it's something like 380 yards per 100 grams. So it's kind of a sport weight but it definitely knits up to a DK. So yeah, it's just magical. I'm sorry I can't find my swatch. 
my whole knitting area is a bit of chaos at the minute, so it's definitely my own fault. I need to tidy it up. But anyway, so what I originally planned to do was I was just like, well, I'll just cast over the holes because I love the end fabric. And so the day I went to the office was the first time I went was two weeks ago. So I went into the office, the co-working space, and I tried through my meetings to like knit on the holes and it was making me feel like, ugh, I did not like it. So I was like, well, as a reward for spending the first day at the office, I went to Ginger Twist, which is my local yarn shop on the way home. And I stood there with every single like neutral colour DK weight yarn in my arms, trying to decide what one to use. And it was interesting because I didn't really register until I got home and I probably, like in retrospect, I probably wouldn't have used it had I realised I already have a sample of the Dorney in this yarn. But I was just trying to work out like which one would hold a good structure, which one was, a good, was good for the piece, which is a nice colour, which is the right yardage. And this just won, like this was the best one. And then I got home and I was like, oh, I already have, I'm already knitting on this yarn. <laughs> so it's got very similar uh, qualities to the Dorney. It is uh it's it's structured but still soft like it still feels nice um, it's very bouncy um i think it'll block up block and block and soften very nicely i've been wearing my bare naked wools my, my brown version a lot and it is already pilling um it's such a soft yarn which is lovely but it is frustrating that it pills a bit quick which you kind of if it's going to be like if it's a soft yarn it's going to pill like that's just what happens but I'm looking forward to having one that's maybe going to be a bit more uh, not pull so fast. And I feel like I'm going to be so cool with like my white zipper sweater. So yeah, that is this. It's not, that is this. That's this. This is that. Uh, that is my Lanark version number two. Um, I'm so excited. My sample nutters have sent me like pictures of how they're getting on with the other two versions and I'm so excited for them. Um, I'm keeping this in my mood bag, which I shared a while ago. I bought this bag with the thought of it being like a little bag to take out with me that would hold like a small project like this. And I thought it would be big enough to fit my phone, say in this front pocket. And this bag, and it is in fact massive. It fits an entire 500 gram cone, um, but I still like it. So I'm taking off the, there's a strap that came with it. For now, I took the strap off and I'm using it as a project bag and we will see how I get on. Okay, three more whips, but I'm missing some yarn. So let me go and get the yarn I'm missing. Oh, the yarn has been secured, but I bashed my arm when I sat down and it really hurts. Okay, shake it off. Ow. Okay, so the next thing I got to talk about, I firstly have to apologise because, because I've been, because, due to the fact, that's what I'm looking for, that I've been keeping a really bad um, podcast schedule. We are like two weeks into a knit along and I've not talked about it yet. So first of all, I'm sorry for that. But there's a knit along running. And it's only running on Instagram. Um, if you're not on Instagram, it's just easier to run there. And I think if I do another knit-along this year, I'll try and put one on Ravelry. But um, I'm not really on Ravelry some days and I'm on Instagram pretty much every day. So it makes it really easy to operate. But those are my apologies. Apologies that it was late to tell you and apologies that it was, it's not on Ravelry. But now I've finished apologising, let me tell you about the knit-along. So I've mentioned this before, but I finally kicked off the knit-along with Amy Palco, who is a Meaningful Stitch. Amy and I go to the same knit night and every once in a while we'll go to the pub and have a few too many wines. And we have been talking about doing this knit-along since I think like September maybe last year. And then Amy had a couple of, I got a new job and then Amy had a couple of um, rough months with some family stuff going on and it just didn't quite come together in time for us to get it before Christmas. But I think it was absolutely perfect because I think this is the best beginning of the year knit along. We are doing a knit along for the Lento sweater. And the Lento, oh, I should have worn my Lento. I was like, yeah, I put pictures in. I had, no, I don't have footage anymore. Never mind. Um, the Lento is a sweater um, from Lina magazine, and it was written by the one of the founders of Lina, and it is a top-down raglan sweater. And the amazing thing about the Lento, it's so fun to knit, 
that's amazing. But the great thing about the Lento is that it doesn't use up very much yarn because of the amazing gauge it's knitted up at. So it's knitted up at I think 15 stitches per 10 centimetres with a fingering weight and a mohair held together. And usually that kind of sweater would be like a 21 stitch gauge. And so it's a lot more open, it's a lot more airy and it makes it this beautiful transitional sweater. It's not super, super cozy in like the depths of winter, but it's a perfect warm woolly layer in like autumn or spring. And it's a really nice way to use up some special yarn because it doesn't use up so much yarn. So I have made, I think this 45 inch bust size and I used less than 800 meters of main yarn. I think I used like 785 or something. Um, no, not meters, that's not true. I used like 15, I had 15 grams left. 175, 185 grams of finger weight yarn, plus my mohair. And so it's just really nice because it knits up really quickly and it's fun and if you've had a December of knitting gift knits or you've lost a bit of your knitting mojo or you are trying to bust through some of your stash yarn, like it's a really good project for that. But also um, it, it's just really nice to wear. Um, you can get the password from Ravelry or you can get it straight from Lina's magazine. I'll put them both of the links down below. And we are using the hashtag Let's Lento um, for you can share your pictures of your Lento on Instagram. And at the end of the month, at the end of the knit along, we will be drawing some prizes and people will be getting some gifts. So we have got some gifts in the form of yarn, which is really exciting. I think we now have three prizes. Um, Initially we had two, one from Charlotte who is a nervous fiber and I'm going to talk about the sad vent from Charlotte later which I've now opened all of. Um, and that would be like either the, mo the fingering weight or the mohair quality to make a lentil. We have a prize from Ginger Twist which is Amy and I's local yarn shop. And I think we now have a prize from Cowgirl Blues who is a, I believe a dyer based in the US. Um, but Amy has used Cowgirl Blues mohair for her first version. And I think when she shared about it, Cowgirl, Girl, Girl, Cowgirl Blues reached out and said, can I give you a prize? So I think we've got a third prize, but I'm not really on top of that. I probably should have read that post. I think Amy shared about it yesterday and I've not read the whole post. So let me go through the details of the cal that I've forgotten. If I remember everything. It run, started on the 5th of January. It runs until the 5th of March. If you've already cast on a lens, so it counts. If you don't finish it, it also counts. Just, you just need to cast on and share. Um, you just need to use a hashtag Let's Lento. And at the end of the, after the 5th of March, we'll do like a random picker on all the posts under the hashtag and pick out three prizes and they'll get the prizes. I think that's all the admin. <laughs> I can't remember. It's been so long since I've run in this long, I can't remember how it operates. So I have got a few lentils planned. Now, I don't really knit with a lot of hand dyed yarn. I find it quite pricey which is obviously very much worth its time because of all the materials, but also the time it takes. Like I understand why it's pricey, but I always find it like checking out or like just clicking the basket where you check out with that price always kind of gives me the fear. I'm like, oh, so much money for a sweater. Even though I definitely have sweaters with non hand dyed yarn, which is probably more expensive. It's this mental barrier for me. So once I found out that I could make a sweater in hand dyed yarn for less than, for fewer than two skeins of fingering weight, that was like permission granted for me to then go and buy a lot of finger of, of hand dyed yarn. So I got the one on my needles currently, but I have three more, I'm looking at them here, three more combinations to go through. So let me talk about the one I'm working on and then I'll go through my next lentils. Now I thought I'd be further along with this, um, but I've run into a snag and I will let you know what that is in a minute. But are you ready for this? This is my first lento. It is stripy! Oh my goodness, I'm so excited. It looks so cool. This is the first time I've ever knit stripes. Like, yes, did I design a top-down zipper sweater with short row shaping and all over pattern? Yes, but have I never knit a stripe before? Also yes. <laughs> um, and I was really, I thought it was gonna be really daunting and it was not daunting, it was really easy. So I'm a bit annoyed at myself for putting it off for so long. Um, so I, yeah, I finished the body and I, Start for the sleeve. I'm a little bit into the sleeve. So let's talk about what let's talk about first. Okay, let's talk about the striping first. So I have done, I did all the short rows. There's a little bit of short row shaping. I did all the short rows in the same colour as the collar. And then I started my stripes and I did seven rounds for every stripe. 
for the yoke, I carried it down the, is that side? It's such a clean carry that I can't tell. Where did I begin to get around? I don't know where I'd put it. I think it must be this side. Well, I've now woven in on my end, so I can't tell if this is where I started. No, this is not it, that's too neat. It's over this side, yes, okay, there we go. So it must have been here, okay. So I carried all, I did all my yarn changing, my row change on this raglan. And I think that looks pretty, like you wouldn't really be able to tell. And then I changed, I kept my beginning of round under the sleeve and it's maybe slightly, like I think between that white and the blue, you can kind of tell, but like otherwise it's pretty seamless. And I used, I did a little bit of research into jogless stripes and I will be perfectly honest and tell you I picked the easiest one, which is just, you knit round one as normal and then round two you slip the first stitch and then you knit as normal and then you just keep going to the end. So it's just about slipping that first stitch on the second round and that's the only thing I did to do stripes and I think it's worked out fine and I would use it again in the future. If they were like really tiny stripes or I was really specific maybe I'd change it but for this it was perfect. And let's talk about the yarn. So despite me having three like actual sweater quantities of yarn for this I had made the first one scrappy. <laughs> Because why not? So I have got, um, you will know if you've watched for a long time, that Wooly Knit is a yarn which I absolutely adore. Um, it is a local, like it's a British, British yarn um, and they make a couple of different bases but the one I adore the most is their British wool, their four ply British wool. And so I have got quite a lot of sweater quantities or like I've bought cones and I've got some left over and so I'm using the cones as scraps to make the stripes. So. The first one, and then I've got some like lesser mohair balls. I don't know if anyone else has this, but I always overbuy for a project and for almost every sweater where I've used mohair, I have a ball of mohair left. So this is the first one. These are kind of wound together, <laughs> um, but this is Harvest and this is a discontinued colorway of Knitting for Olive, no, of Santa's Garden Tinsel Mohair. This color is not available anymore, which is annoying, but it was the perfect match at the time. I used this stripe for my sweater. I put some pictures in it, my sweater number 18. Um, my second is my, um, this green. So this is Celtic green, the British wool. This I used for my stepdad sweater as one of the contrast colours. And I'm holding that together with a ball of Reseda, uh, Santa's, no, Falcolana Tilia in the colour Reseda, which I used for my first lento. And I think I had a full ball left after, th like, I think I used three like only just just got into the fourth ball of mohair and I think this is the leftover of the fourth ball of mohair. Um, you can realise I could have made my life easier by winding yarn off a cone and did I do that? No of course not. My third is um, this one which is the colour I used for my first sweater by Hive Knits and I'm actually I didn't have any of that mohair left or I did but not very much but I had a scrap ball of blue mohair from again Phil Calanatilia so it's a bit darker than the one I used in my first sweater, but it, it still works really nicely. And then fourth, I have cinnamon, which is my all time favorite color of the British wool and some of this rust, uh, drop small hair and rust. And I used the cinnamon again for the, I used it in my care sweater and I also used it for my set dad sweater. Oh, and then I've got some white. I just have a little look at this in a minute. Um, and this I used in my, advent blanket which is currently a little bit on hold and some drops mohair I have no idea what I used this in I thought I used this for my sweater number 11 but that was definitely Tilia and this is not Tilia so I don't know what I used the drops mohair in but I had some of that too so that's what it's looking like so these are the stripes um and the body I just went like until the blue until I got back to the white and then did this and the sleeve I'm just going to go until this, this the same sleeve length of my current length because that is the sleeve length that I love and it really works for me. So I've started the blocker I'm currently facing is I cannot find I'm using a 5.5 mil needle and I have a 5.5 mil short like a 16 inch 40 centimeter circular and can't find it I cannot find it anywhere in my house I can find the six millimeter I cannot find the 5.5 and I'm trying magic loop and it's kind of okay but with there being like a change in 
color every seven rounds and then with my magic loop I'm just struggling a little bit with it it's just not really working for me so I ordered a new 5.5 millimeter and as somebody on Instagram very accurately pointed out I am sure that once the new one arrives I will find the old one so I'm just not making very much progress on the second sleeve because it's too fiddly to knit and I'm not enjoying it but I think that needle arrives tomorrow so once that arrives I will be flying away on the second sleeve um, I'd like to have this finished by the next podcast to be honest and I think I will um, and I'm looking forward to wearing this like just this with my jeans it's gonna be so cute I'm just gonna look like the cutest person and then I could wear this to the office on my office days um, the thing is though is at home like it's quite cold right now um, we don't have the heating on all day like the heating comes on a little bit in the morning and then a little bit in the afternoon or like the evening like 5 p.m. Um, so I'm kind of used to it being a little bit chilly I'm never, like I'm in a t-shirt right now, I'm never normally in a t-shirt. I'm normally always in a whole big sweater. The office I go to has the heating on all day. So I can't wear my sweaters all day because I get too warm. <laughs> which is a real first world problem. It makes me appreciate that at home we keep it cold or colder so I can wear my sweaters more. Okay, so let's talk about my other quantities for a lento. Because there are three. So like I said, I found out you could make one with two skeins of yarn and I went a bit mad. Over the course of a little while, so I got, let's start with the mohair. So it uses a strand of finger weight and a strand of mohair in the sample. Now, um, I know people who have used Suri and it's been fine. I've seen some people knit it without a fluff and just using a bigger, like a, just using like a worsted weight yarn and that's worked out fine. Um, but all mine that I'm planning are the traditional method of a strand of finger and a strand of mohair. So I've got one, I've got two lots of fingering and one lot of mohair like to, to make three different sweaters and they all have to be paired with something different so the first one is this skein from Telling Yarns um, I really like Telling Yarns my first lento is made out of their yarn um, but they've moved away from they're moving to 100% British breeds and so they had a sale on so to be justified by arm purchases and they were discontinuing some bases so this base is discontinued I am pretty positive so this is Swedish shorts now. All of Telling Yarns um, colorways are based on um, stories or like literature. So this is Harry Potter. Um, and it is, it's called Mo Marble Lace. 72% kid mohair, 28% silk. And it's 420 meters per 100 grams. And so my plan is to hold this, I think with some knitting for olive cotton merino, no, nothing for all of merino because I have a lot of it in the colourway putty um, to make my second version. So that is one of the lentils. The next one is this beautiful fingering weight strand, uh, fingering weight strand? Finger weight yarn from Stranded. Uh, Stranded Dye Works I think is one of like the OG um, indie dyers and that is Jude and Jude is based here in Scotland in uh, Fife just across the water from me in Edinburgh. And this colour is called, so it's a superwash merino nylon 7525, 425 metres and this colour is called patisserie and it's this beautiful quite neutral cream with this kind of these like speckles throughout it. I've never knit with a yarn like this. Um, I've used a little bit of hand-dyed yarn but nothing with like, nothing speckled I don't think. And I was completely inspired by Laura Penrose of Penrose Knits who bought, I don't think she's even knit it up. No shade, Laura, I just don't think you have. <laughs> I'm not calling you out, I'm just saying I don't think I've seen it. Um, and I'm sure she was making something with a Biff Sugar yarn that was a speckle, like a neutral speckle with like brownie speckles. And I was so inspired that I went, I've just today ordered the mohair that she was planning to use, which is the vanilla from Drops. Not the beige, which I would normally use, the vanilla to make this like warm brown sweater, warm brown, warm beige sweater. So that's my plan. Um, I need to do some swatching I think and see but yeah it's got these lovely lovely little speckles and I think that would be a very good like not quite a neutral but mostly neutral and then my third one <laughs> is the one I'm a little more stuck with so this is a yarn from Tumeki um, Tumeki is Caressa she is a Kiwi living in the UK what am I doing there we go um, and I've used her yarn before to make some gift hats and they get worn all the time I'm a big fan um, she's only on Etsy, I believe, and she did a uh, the Bridgerton collection last year. So this is called the Duke. Um, so a lot of like more traditionally, I guess, masculine colours. 
purples and blues and like rich dark colours, it's like petrol blue in there and this is amazing. Okay, it has to do a quick battery change. Um, yeah, so this one um, is beautiful. And I again think it'd be really wearable. My problem with this is I cannot decide what mohair to pair it with to keep it neutral, but also like I know the mohair will really brightly shine through and I would love to still keep some of these colors in there. And I just don't know what color mohair to pick. Like, do I pick a brown? Do I pick a beige? Do I pick a black? Do I pick a blue? Like, I cannot decide. So. I feel like this one probably will not be cast on in this lentil set because I can't make up my mind and I've really thought about it and I still can't decide. So by the 5th of March I would like to have two finished and one cast on, like I don't need to finish my third one. And so I should decide between, actually I should, I mean I pretty much this one's, I could cast this on already because my other one, I'm waiting for the sleeves, I should finish the first one. Um, so yeah, I need to decide whether I want to cast on the mohair version or the stranded version. I think the stranded one is the one I'm more excited about. But Amy finished her one with the variegated mohair and it's so beautiful. It makes me really want to cast on the variegated mohair one. I can't decide. But it's okay. I'll finish the first one and then I will decide. So <clears throat> that is the lentil. The lentil cow. It's the hashtag Let's Lentil. You can enter on Instagram and yeah it's just really fun to knit. I think um, some people have been working on them and I've seen them share them on Instagram and everyone seems to just say like this is amazing like I so love this pattern and so yeah I'm just really happy that it's a nice pattern that everyone's enjoying and I think if you are interested you should take part because I think you will I think you would like it. It's a super it's a size inclusive pattern um, I will include like I said there's a link on Ravelry and an off Ravelry link so everyone can access it if you can't access Ravelry and um, if you're working on the lens, let me know. I'm intrigued. And do we think I'm going to get through all three? I'm not sure. <laughs> okay, so I've got two more works in progress. I've got a lot of money deals. I did not realise I had so much of money deals, but I do. So the next one is a bit of an odd one. Well, it's not really odd. The next one, I, in my last episode, showed an order from Holst. I got an order in their Black Friday sale. And one of the things I purchased was a sweater's quantity of Cielo, which is their like fluffy base. And this is what it looks like. It is, it's lovely. I cannot remember the fiber makeup of it right now because I don't have a ball band with me, but it's really, really lovely. It kind of reminds me of like a Sniffnog or a Drops Air or like a Cause, Santa's Gone Cause. It's a, it's not actually a blown yarn. It's a chain it. Um, where those ones are blown, this one's more of a chain, I don't know if you can see that at all. It's really stretchy, which I kind of love, I think it's really cool. And I've knit this up twice into two sweaters, like one cardigan and one sweater, one of which I've given away and one of which is in a bag to go to the charity shop because I do not wear it. But I love this yarn and I really wanted something in this yarn and then it was sitting there and I was thinking, okay, it's going to start getting warmer, I need to knit up like the fluffy, chunkier yarns I should knit up now because I want to go to wear them. And I mentioned I work from home and this, I want like a really cozy work from home sweater. And so I cast on for the Wednesday sweater with petite knit. Now it is a drop shoulder design and it's quite a chunky gauge. And I am just about like not very far away from joining in the round. Um, so this is what it looks like. I've done my back and it's on some very loosely tied barber cords um, and yeah I'm just working on this front panel now and it's so beautiful and soft like I'm really glad that I've cast this on I'm looking forward to wearing this and it's knitting up pretty quickly it's been a very like supplemental whip it's not really had very much time or attention but especially once it's joined in the round I think it will fly um, I might suggest that we have like a go to the cinema or something soon because that's where I get a lot of knitting done <laughs> Um, and I think once this is joining the round, it'd make it perfect. Like, if we were to go to the cinema, I think I'd finish like half the body in one movie. So, yeah, I am loving it a lot. I also, though, however, already have a sweater quantity. No, I already have a sweater. So, bleh, rewind context. Okay, the Wednesday sweater is a turtleneck. I already have sweater number 11 from Everything's Knitwear, which is a turtleneck and it's a very similar shape. And also the color that I made that in is a very similar like mushroom color to this. So I don't want this to be a turtleneck. 
but the Wednesday sweater is a turtleneck, so I'm not entirely sure yet what I'm going to do about this neckline, but I think I'm just going to pick up and do a double folded rib. Alternatively, I might do like a funnel neck, but I'm thinking that my funnel neck and my folded neckline are probably going to be the same length, so I might just knit the funnel neck, try it on, see if I like it. If I don't like it, I will fold it in and sew it down. <laughs> um, so that is the plan, and there's something else I was going to say. Oh, I did not pick gauge. I can't remember what the required gauge is, but I am off by one stitch. However, I love the fabric that I got. So what I have done is I, so I think the gauge would be 15 and I got 14 centimeters. Anyway, I did my gauge swatch and I was one stitch off and I wanted to make the size was 120 centimeters at the bust. So what I did is I calculated with the gauge I got, how many stitches I needed on the bust. And I think that number was 168. And so that will tell you how many, that will tell you the gauge I have if you want to work it out. <laughs> However, I saw that in the pattern, the very first side, the size one at the bust had 168 stitches. So I decided to follow the instructions for size one. That being said, anytime it specified a length to knit, I followed the size that I would have knit for myself, which I believe is size three. So for example, uh, the number of stitches that I cast on at the back were for size one, but the length that I knit the back panel to is for size three. And the number of stitches that I picked up at the shoulders here, the number of stitches, size one, but the length of the panel is size three. And that should mean that um, the gauge will mean the fabric is the same. It should fit like size three for me. So whilst the gauge is denser, um, like the armhole will be the armhole size that I need for my size. So say it's like 20 centimetres, I will knit till 20 centimetres because I need a 40 centimetre armhole. So that's what I'm doing. If you are, if you're like the part, if you, I feel like gauge is one of those things that once you get gauge, like it opens your world to everything else. If you're one of these people, you will know exactly what I'm talking about. If you're not there, either because you don't want to or because you're not there yet, you think I'm talking gibberish, you're like, what is she talking about with gauge? <laughs> but I think understanding gauge properly is the number one thing that made me able to start designing. Um, just a heads up. <laughs> Some unsolicited advice that nobody asked for. So yeah, so this is where it's at. Um, it's so soft and it's so fluffy and I would like to have this done like at some point, but I'm not like desperately missing on it. And I do also have two other, two other top down sweaters, like, that are both on my needles and other bags that have been dormant since the end of last year. So um, I do want to like turn through some of them and get them off my needles because I'd like them in my wardrobe and I want to start wearing them. So yes, that is my Wednesday sweater. Again, just sort of plodding, plodding along, slowly but surely. Um, and hopefully I'll have something to show next time. And I think once it gets joined in the round, I will be moving pretty quickly with it, is what I would expect. Perfect, I have one more work in progress. And this one has consumed me for a week. Um, I just got this idea and I had to make it happen. And I cast it on last Saturday and now the body is finished. And so, okay, oh, it smells so good. Okay, I went to grab a ball of the yarn. I'm gonna talk about it before I talk about it. So, this whip. <laughs> I have been a little bit manic recently. Let's put it that way, not, um, I don't know if I can use, I don't know if that's an insensitive way to say, like I know that manic is a general, an actual medical term, so I don't know if that's insensitive to say I've been that way. But I've been very erratic, let's just say that. I've been very erratic recently in that I cannot settle, I think because for the past like four months I've had like design, very clear neck design in my head. <laughs> and I took a little bit of a break after designing the Lanark, I think the test that started, I mean I say take a break, the test that started in December, so it's been like two weeks. <laughs> but I told myself like I take a little bit of time, stop, gather my thoughts. Um, like I don't want to be a factory like churning out ideas all the time and I just need a little space from it and like work out like what does summer look like for knitting for me and all these things. And for some reason when I decided that, that resulted in like a swatch fest like no other. I have done so much swatching over in the past, how long has it been? I don't know. I have just been swatching like a mad woman. Um, I cannot stop myself and every idea like comes up and bubbles and then goes away again and some of them stick around for longer. I've just realised actually I um, I knit a hat 
that's technically a finished object if, and it is a tap. It's sitting on my table because I got excited about the stitch pattern and it was colour work so I was like it has to be in the round. So I cast on a whole hat and finished a whole hat in a night so I could test out the colour work motif. Maybe I'll come back to it. Maybe I won't. I don't know. <laughs> um, so I've been like consumed by the need to swatch. And then this idea took hold of my brain last week and I just need to make it happen. And now I have almost an entire cardigan. <laughs> so, um, I don't know how I'm gonna hold this up. Let me hold it up and show you. This is an all over lace slash mesh cardigan. It looks really good actually. It looks better on the screen than I thought it would. <laughs> so this is this really, really fun, uh, I thought I had it this right, like open work mesh um, stitch. It's really easy to do and it makes this really open gauge and it's all over the cardigan. And I just thought this would be like the fun, like a really fun thing to wear in summer. And we're rolling with it. I'm just gonna see how I get on with it. So. Um, I finished it last night. It blocked in like four hours because I mean there's a tiny little bit of dampness maybe um, but the lace of course it just completely blocked out and so this morning I sort of I did the shoulders with a three needle bind off which was fun and yeah that's how it's looking. So my next plan is I'm going to put a um, button band. These are This is going to be a round neck version and I'm going to put a button band down each side and then do the neck band and then I pick up for the sleeves and do some nice long, like, well, regular length sleeves. Oh, it smells so good. I just realised I put an order in today um, at Wool Warehouse and my plan was to add an extra bottle of this wool wash and I forgot to, I forgot to buy it, which is annoying. So I am using a new to me yarn, which I am really enjoying. So let me talk about the yarn and then talk about my next swatch. This is Pearl Soho. I'm having a real Pearl Soho moment. They're very well priced and everything I've tried so far I've really loved the quality of. Um, so this is knitting yarn and it is 100% merino wool from Paw Soho. This I cannot remember what it's priced at. It is 219 yards which I believe is bang on 200 meters uh, per 100 grams. So it's very similar to like uh, Phil Kalana Pervina Highland Wool or Cascade 220. Um, it's 100% merino, it's really lovely and soft um, but still like not so soft that I'd be worried it would pill immediately. Um, and it's this beautiful blue colour. This colour is called Hydro Blue. And I don't really know why I ordered it, if I'm honest. I ordered the Goodwill for the Lanark and then I was just like, oh, let's try some. And um, shipping to the UK from Pearl Soho is not too expensive. I think it's like $17, which is what, like £13, £13, £14. So it's not inexpensive, um, but it's about the same price as an extra skein of yarn. <laughs> and Pearl Soho, I don't know what's going on, but they have non-stop sales right now on their yarn. So I do think it's still really well priced. I purchased, I think, a sweater's quantity of this and a sweater's quantity of the Goodwill. I actually have, a, they're both very generous sweater quantities. I think I have like seven, I've got four of this left. So I got six of this, so that's 1200 meters of the blue. And I got four of the, of the which is like oh, almost, 800, almost 800 yards, like 1500 yards maybe, so what's that, 400 meters? I don't know. Two generous sweater quantities for like just over a hundred dollars. Um, just like 80 pounds. So that, my math might not be mathing. Is the math mathing? I'm not sure. But I think it's really well priced and Takes a little bit of time to get here, it takes like two weeks to get to the UK, uh, but if you're not in a rush for it, that's totally fine. And um, somebody told me, and this is just also just generally well-known information, I think, but I didn't know this, uh, the customs charge for the UK is up to the value of 135, sorry, over the value of 135 pounds. So if the value of your package is less than 135 pounds, it should not get stopped at customs and there should not be any customs charges. And so far, touch wood, that has been the case for me, so I make sure that my order is less than $135, or pounds actually, yeah, pounds, and um, I've not run into any issues yet. So would really recommend this. I'm gonna have quite a lot left over because I've only used two and I've got the whole body done. So I reckon I might at most use two more, um, but that would mean I still have 400 meters left. So we will see, I might take some to knit night and see if anyone wants to try some. Um, it'd also make a really lovely like Sophie scarf or something like, accessory wise but I'm not big on knitting accessories so 
we will see. Oh, maybe a lento. No, I don't have that for a lento. Okay, so this is where we're at. Um, it's interesting, if you've been a long time watcher, you will know that my very first design has never made it past the needles. It's still on the needles. And it is a lace corrigan <laughs> in this colour. <laughs> so um, it's interesting that I've gone back to this. And if I'm honest, um, I didn't really think, like when I first thought about this design, like thought it through, I don't think this is the colour that I had in mind for it. However, I have a lot of yarn right now and I'm just trying to remind myself, like, do I need it before I order it? Like, do you need that? Um, because I need to work through some stuff in my stash because I am running out of space. And so I went for the blue because I was like, I actually need, like, I don't have any other plans for this yarn. I should use something I have. And I'm glad I have because it's beautiful. Such a nice color. I've got a skirt um, with some like of this blue in it. And I think with a, like a t-shirt underneath, this will be lovely. So what are the plans for this? Well, the plans are first to finish it and decide if I like it. <laughs> um, I don't know yet, like I'm still unsure. I think it's a tough, like I tried it on today, but like it looks like a weird lace vest. So it's hard to tell if I like this yet. Um, so I need to finish it and like finish the sleeves and see what I'm thinking. Um, however, I have another, like my vision of this at the moment is the current version, which is going to be like there are going to be two neckline options and two sleeve options. And so there's going to be a short sleeve and a long, a short sleeve and a long sleeve, and a round neck and a V neck. And this is because I think this would make such a beautiful little like summer. I guess it's still a cardigan, but I think I would just wear a camisole underneath it, where you've got this like short little drop shoulder and this V neck, and then like buttons down here, and then you just wear it with like as a short sleeve T-shirt with a camisole underneath it. Wouldn't that be so fun? Um, so it also knits up really quickly, which I like for a summer knit because I don't have patience. I want my summer knits now and I live in a country with a very short summer window. So, um, so yeah, so my plan, I mean, I um, have like a very vague timeline in my head. Uh, actually, you know, I have it on my laptop where I can kind of look and see um, if I were to release it at X date, like when would I have to have the pattern ready for? And it looks like it would be the end of like the end of February. So this took me a week to do. So I've got plenty of time. I've got all of, I've got the rest of January and I've got all of February to work through this and decide what I think about it. And if I want it to be a pattern that would come out like late spring. Um, oh, but it is really lovely. It's really nice. This wool is it's really, really impressed with it. Um, I don't need to order more Pearl Soho, Pearl Soho yarn. I don't need to order any more yarn. Um, but I am really enjoying Pearl Soho at the moment. So yeah. Um, this is it. I, I'd like to do, I'd like to get the button bands and the top, this like collar done today, I think. Um, and then pick up for the sleeves, maybe get a sleeve done over the weekend and then I can stop and see what I think and whether I like it. And I also think I need to try it on with like a reasonable outfit because I tried it on with like my pyjamas this morning. Um, I think putting it on with like my jeans <laughs> might help me decide what I think about it. So yeah, I'm intrigued. What do you think of an all over mesh cardigan? <laughs> have I lost it? That I put a poll on yesterday saying like, have I lost my mind? Or like, I'm so excited for this. And it was 50, it was like 51% I'm excited and 49% you've lost your mind. And a few people messaged me and said, you've lost your mind, but I'm also very excited. <laughs> so cool. So I have one last thing to talk about and it is something very fun. Um, oh. Look at me, I even brought my scraps to show you. <laughs> don't say I don't treat you well. Okay, Ooh, my last thing is something glorious. So I mentioned this last time and I got a bit of a stick from a comment saying it was insensitive of me to have, a, to have an advent in January. But I'm gonna show this because it is an absolutely glorious work of art. And, oh, I'm gonna pause because I meant to say it actually, sorry, I forgot. I am making the short sleeve version of the cardigan in cotton. And so I swatched for it already in this pink and I'm gonna get, I'm gonna do it in white, not pink, but I had the same yarn in pink. Um, so I'm a little bit off gauge, but um, this is the drops bell. I'm excited. Anyway, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so um, yeah, I did, do a, I did do an advent in December. I got a recycled advent from, um, uh, yarn shop in the UK. It was £40 
for like little cakes of recycled yarn and I'm making a blanket with that. It's currently a little bit on hold because I'm waiting to see if they get more colours in. They told me they're going to start stocking the mini skeins more regularly and then if they get those in I'm going to be more like I'll plan out how the rest of the blanket's going to go. So I got that and I also did a yarn swap with Sarah Crean of Sarah Crean Knits and so I have some mini skeins in there. So I didn't get like a hand dyed yarn advent or anything in December um, but I will say I had a bit of FOMO and some people were opening some beautiful advents and I was like oh that's really nice. <laughs> and so when Charlotte, so she did her pre-order for this advent which is a calendar for January, um, I at first was like the first time it went up I didn't get it but the second time the pre-order, like the second bun for like an extra 10 and I was like I need one. It just caught me on the right day at the right time and I ordered one. So this is the beautiful tag or card. There's another really nice one that came with it and I've lost it somewhere. Um, Charlotte is the, the cover girl of my care sweater pattern. Um, I've met Charlotte a few times and she is the dyer behind Nervous Fibre and they, they're based in Glasgow and she dyes beautiful, very like... Mm, nature coloured? Like earthy, but not all browns. Um, and so she makes those and so I'm going to show them, they are not remotely in order but I'm just going to show them in like little batches. I have no idea what I'm doing with them. So that's my first disclaimer, like I don't know what I'm going to make but I'm also okay with that and I'm so delighted by them, like just having them feels exciting um, and I do want to knit them up into something. I've not decided what yet though so I need to get back to that at some point. So I have 1600 meters and I have 16 mini skeins. The sad event ran from January 1st until January 16th, which is typically known as like Blue Monday, which I think is now being debunked. It's not a thing, but that's where the calendar ran to. So um, these are not the order they came in, but I'm just going to show you them in like four sets of four. So this is the first set of four. And then this is the second set of four. Oh, they're blowing out a little bit. How good are my holding skills. This is the next set of four and then this is the final set of four. So it's just this absolutely like glorious, glorious set of minis. Um, they do fade really nicely. Um, there are a couple of different like fade options. So I could do something with a fade. I also, I love the idea of like a tasseled shawl. <laughs> I say that I love now and I don't know if I love it but I like that idea. So I don't know, I also kind of like the idea of a blanket because I don't wear a lot of bright colours out but I would wear a black. I, I guess a blanket would get a lot of use. I think a shawl is where I'm going, I think. And then I'm taking like a fade, something like the in green. Is it called the sauce, the in green shawl from, um, that was designed for exploring nets and fibres and that is using four full skeins which is the same yardage as what I have so that would work. But I want to show you my favourite skein. Um, which is my lost fade, okay, this one. And I think it's the one that goes least in the whole fade, but I love it so much. Um, it's called Spren. And it is this one. And I love it so much. It's got like speckles and then like, some pinks and then it's blue and then it's, oh, I really love it. I really, really love it. So that was my favourite one. I love them all to be honest, but um, oh, look at this. Like, this is so nice. This one is called Glow. Um, I also love this one with like the pink, like the got some greens in there. Go on, here we go. It's called Red Sky, and there's one called Salt. Oh, this one, this one is also one of my favorites. It's called Salt, and I think this is really cool. So yeah, so um, I am very happy. I'm really pleased I got it. I was on the fence, and it definitely is an indulgence, like a January advent calendar. And now, of course, I have the situation which everyone has when they get an advent, but they don't know what to do with it. So um. We will see, I've been watching some videos. I watched um, Whitney from, is it just made by, made by Whitney? She put up two videos of like pattern suggestions to use your mini skeins and I watched them both and I'm still not sold on it. Like I still can't decide. So um, yeah, but I, I'm just, like, look at this stack of beauty. It is incredible. So I really like doing this. It was um, 70 pounds, which obviously is still a lot of money. Um, but in comparison to a full advent, which I think some of them were priced at like 180, it was for me a really affordable way to try a hand ad advent. And um, I don't know what I'll do next year with advent. I would be tempted to, I would 
comfortably do a sad event again with, um, I think there's so much excitement happening in December. I would comfortably think doing a sad event again with, with um, Charlotte's yarn because I thought it was beautiful. So it came in this really nice box and I'm just keeping it in the box for now until I decide what to do with it. And I just take them out and play with them. I think I've mentioned before that I used to really love playing with um, like paint chip cards, at, like being cute at the, at the hardware store. Um, and this feels like it's tickling the same part of my brain when I feel like the minis kids to play with them. Like it's a very similar thing. Um, so yeah, so that's everything I have to show. And what else? A bit of a life update, I guess. How are things going? Things are good. December was very, very November and December were both very, very busy. So we are enjoying a very relaxing January. We've had now like two weekends with no major plans and it's just been, it's been very odd, but it's been really nice. I think we've needed it. Lots of like sleeping and eating right. And it's just been really lovely. So that's been really good. Um, what else is happening? I've been knitting a lot. I think in December, I my knitting mojo a little bit. It wasn't failed, but like over the Christmas break, I didn't really knit very much. And now it's back with a passion, which has been really lovely. So it's been nice to be doing so much knitting. Um, I have been reading a little bit, which I also have really, I used to be a really big reader. And the past probably like 18 months, I've not been so good with reading. I just always do something else. Like I always pick something easier and it's always TV watching. So I am currently reading Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow and it is incredible. I'm about halfway through and I'm really enjoying it. So if anyone else is in a slump and is looking for a, a good book to get you out of it so far, I would rec recommend that. Um, and um, I've been watching The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills, which I've never watched before. And so I started at the very beginning and it is amazing. <laughs> it's so like background TV, which I love, but it is pure, it's real, real trash TV. It's fun to watch like early days reality TV. I think it started in like 2011. And um, yeah, it's been fun. So I've been enjoying this. It's been great. Um, and work has been really good. I struggled, I think, when my, I started a new job in October and it's a very different role for me and I find it a different kind of challenging. But I've come back and we've got like this laser focus now and I'm really enjoying it. So I'm feeling very like, I'm feeling, um, competent at work. <laughs> I think that's the thing. I think before the break I felt like I was a bit out of my depth and I was like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. But I'm back and I feel like it's a real focus and I'm really enjoying it. And yeah, two big designs coming out. I've got the Dorney uh, next week, which I need to, like I say, get organised for. And then the Lanark is coming and I'm excited for both. I, um, I guess the next thing that could come out would be the lace cardigan. I need to decide if I want to do that. And then I think I got two summer designs, um, but I'm not going to rush them, like probably one in June or one in July and just take it easy. Um, and I've already started thinking about what's going to come out next winter. <laughs> um, I think I mentioned in a previous episode that I applied for a couple of magazines. I submitted some design proposals um, and one was accepted and one was not accepted. So the the rejection came early in the day on like this week, I think it would be Wednesday. And I was really gutted, if I'm honest. I was like, oh. I, it's, it's funny because I didn't really feel like I'm really glad I didn't get it but just the concept of getting the rejection was quite hard um, and so it's kind of it put me in a bit of a funny mood a bit of a blue mood and then in the afternoon the acceptance came through so I was for, the, for the, uh, the, the other magazine so I was like oh so it turned out to like be a good day and <laughs> I messaged Amy Palco was telling this I um when I, I was, at, I was at the office on Wednesday when I got the rejection and so when I finished my meetings for the day I went home and like bought myself some new pyjamas on the way home as like a consolidation prize like I'm so sad, consolidation, consolation sorry and I was so sad and I was like oh I'm just sad, I just want to be cosy and I'm going to go home and knit and get into bed for the evening and stay there and um, so I went and bought myself some new pyjamas so that was my reward for not getting it and then I ended up the day like a net win because I did get one another the one and I also got some new pajamas. So <laughs> that was a good day. So I can't I don't think I can talk super widely about the design. I think I just knit it and submit it. Knit and submit. Um it's due like later in the year and it's not gonna come out until the end of the year. So I'll talk about that more, I guess, later closer to the date. Um but that's kind of fun. And um I'm really glad that the other one was not chosen because the other one is 
was with the Sonder yarn, which I showed a few months ago, and this now means that I can independently publish, like publish that on myself. And I think that is my, like that's gonna be a real good pattern. And it also means I get to keep the sample, <laughs> which is fun because I think with the magazines you send the sample off and you don't keep it. Um, but for this one, I get to keep it. So that I'm thinking will be my very first launch in September, ages away, but that's when it's gonna come out. So I have a couple of months to start thinking about that. Um, so yeah, so I am gonna be in a magazine later in the year, which is really cool and will be fun. Um, and I'll be working on that at some point. They've, they've yet to decide. I was very open and flexible with like yarn choices and colour choices, so I have no idea um, what colour it's going to be or what yarn I'm going to knit it up in. Um, so I think they're still working that out and then I'll probably be casting it on kind of soon. I should keep that in mind actually when I'm planning my cast-ons. I do have the sample to knit up. <laughs> some point in the relatively near future. I think I decided that I will start it after my LAN arc is finished. So yeah, um, and this weekend put the pictures on Sunday, which I'm really looking forward to. And otherwise, again, a very quiet weekend. I've got a wedding to go to in two weeks um, and I'm planning to make a dress to wear. So I have the fabric. So this weekend, we Saturday, I'd like to get some sewing done. And I'm also going to an afternoon tea in Edinburgh um, for, Valentine's Day with us, some sewists, some people who sew, and I think the, the theme is red and pink. And I have already a dress cut out in red and pink, so I want to sew that up this weekend as well. Um, I did notice that my I like to shop for fabrics from Rainbow Fabric Kilburn, and they do fabric drops, and they do a lot of viscose, and I love to sew with viscose. And they are doing a drop today at six pm, and I'm very excited for it. I've already I've watched their story, and I know which one I'm going for. It's this black tool with little hearts on it that I need. Um, I do not need it. That is bad mentality. I would like it very much. Um, and so I I think I'm going to sew up this one I have. It's like a pink and red check. But I'm going to order the, the other one and then maybe I might make a second one closer to the time. We'll see. So yeah, that's everything with me. I hope all this footage worked. I'm excited to edit. I think actually, interestingly, last week I had to film and it felt very much like a an obligation and then even editing I put it off for three days because I couldn't be bothered. Today I woke up and I was like yeah I get a podcast today and um, now I'm looking forward to editing so I hope you enjoyed. I hope your January is going well, I hope you're enjoying the start of the year and that you're feeling kind of rejuvenated and that everything's nice. I hope that you've got some fun things on your needles and I'll be back next week with a pattern launch. That is quite exciting. Um, I will speak to you then. Have a good week. Bye.